Hello and welcome to my channel. In this lesson, we are going to talk about thin lenses. Our key inquiry question is, what's a lens? My name is Clevin Demo. Stay with me until the end. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define a lens, identify types of lenses, define terms used in lenses, locate images formed by convex and concave lenses. What is a lens? A lens is a transparent material with at least one curved surface. From the definition, a lens must have at least one curved surface. There are two types of lenses. Convex lens, which is also called a converging lens. This one, which is the thickest at the middle. The second one is concave lens or a diverging lens. A diverging lens is thinnest at the middle. And it's shown here. Lenses are made of glass, clear plastic, or perspex. A lens refracts light. Unlike the mirror, which we said reflects light, a lens refracts light, meaning it allows light to pass through it and the light is going to bend at the interface. Lenses are found in different uh, places. They are found in cameras, human eye, spectacles, telescopes, microscopes, and projectors. These are just some of the basic gadgets which use lenses. We are going to define terms used in lenses. The first term we are going to define is center of curvature. This is the center of the sphere of which the surface of a lens is part. A lens has two centers of curvature. Remember, in the definition we said a lens must have at least one curved surface. Our lenses here have two curved surfaces and we call them uh, biconcave lenses and this one we call them biconvex lenses because they have two curved surfaces. So this curve of this lens is assumed to be part of a bigger sphere so this is an imaginary sphere so the center of that sphere is what you call the center of curvature that's why from the definition we have said is the center of the sphere of which the surface of the lens is part so if you look at our diagram the convex the two spheres are overlapping and one curve for this side is assumed to be part of this imaginary sphere. This other curve on this other side is also part of this imaginary sphere on this other side. So the centers of those spheres are what we call the centers of curvature. And in this case, this lens also has two centers of curvature. Another term is the radius of curvature. So the distance between the center of that sphere and the arc of that sphere is what we call the radius of curvature. And this other side here, the distance between the center of that sphere and the arc of that uh, sphere is what we call the radius of curvature. The next term is principal axis, a line passing through the centers of curvatures. This line, which is joining the two centers of curvatures, is what we call the principal axis. Another term we need to define is the optical center. An optical center is simply a point midway between the lens surfaces. This part here, the center of these uh, lens surfaces, this part here is the optical center for the con convex lens and this is the optical center for the concave lens. Another term we need to define is the principal focus. This is a point on the principal axis where all rays close and parallel the principal axis converge after refraction by a convex lens or where rays appear to diverge from after refraction by a concave lens. So the first part of the definition is covering for the convex lens and we have said is a point where all rays parallel and close the principal axis converge after refraction by the convex lens while for the concave lens 
this is the point where the rays appear to diverge from this point here these rays are actually coming straight and diverging from the lens but if we are to produce these lines backwards they'll appear to be originating from this point and that's a point we call the principal focus for the concave lens the next term is the focal length this is the distance between the optical center and the principal focus this distance between the optical center we said the optical center is the point midway between the lens surfaces and the principal focus or the focal point is what we call the focal length is shown there so on the other side also for the concave lens this is a point between the principal focus and the optical center of uh, that concave lens so the focal length for the converging lens is the real because it's formed by the convergence of uh, real rays while for the concave lens the focal length is virtual because it's formed by imaginary rays this is a convergence of imaginary rays. These rays drawn using dotted lines are not actual rays, but the imaginary rays. That's why we say that the principal focus or the focal length for the concave lens is virtual. Let's say the focal length was 10 centimeters. Because this focal length is virtual, you're going to write it as negative 10 centimeters. The negative sign actually shows that it's virtual. Well, for this other side, you're going to just write 10 centimeters because it's real. From our discussion so far, we have seen that when parallel rays are directed towards a lens, the rays will be refracted either by being converged or being diverged. Next, we talk about ray diagrams ray diagrams are very important as they help us locate the position of an image formed by a lens there are three rays used to locate images formed by lenses when drawing a ray diagram you use at least two rays to locate the image as shown below the first ray we're going to use to help us locate the position of an image is a ray parallel the principal axis and this ray is going to be refracted through the principal focus or it's going to appear to diverge from the principal focus for the concave lens after refraction so if you look at this ray it's parallel the principal axis and once it strikes the lens it's going to be refracted through the principal focus for this other one for the concave lens the ray is parallel the principal axis but it is diverging outwards but if you produce this line backwards it's going to appear to be originating from the principal focus the second ray is a ray passing through the optical center o this ray passing through the optical center for both lenses passes undeviated it's not affected by the lens so it's going to pass straight on the third and last ray we can use to locate the position of the image is a ray which is passing through the principal focus so a ray passing through the principal focus is going to be refracted parallel to the principal axis for this other side this ray is appearing to be going towards the principal focus but once it strikes the lens it's going to be refracted parallel to the principal axis during image formation it's important to remember that real rays and real images are drawn using full lines while virtual rays and virtual images are drawn broken or dotted remember also that real rays have arrows you have to indicate arrows while for virtual rays you don't have to indicate the arrows because remember they're imaginary rays you have to use at least two rays from the tip of the object in order to locate 
are the image. Still, on image formation, you need to know or remember that you don't have to draw the actual lens the way it is. The concave uh, which is curved inwards or the convex which is curved outwards. You use the following samples. The first sample here is for the convex lens, while this other one is for the concave lens. So you're going to see how they are being used while doing uh, ray diagrams or drawing ray diagrams. So the first image that we have is an image formed by rays from infinity. Rays from infinity come in parallel lines. Once they strike the lens, the first ray is going to go through the optical center and deviated. But the second ray is going to be refracted through the principal focus. And where the rays meet is where the position of the image is going to be. So in our case, uh, we have rays from infinity uh, converging at the principal focus. So we say our image is formed at the principal focus, that is F. So our image is going to be real since it's formed by the convergence of real rays. It's inverted, you can see it's upside down, it's diminished and it's formed at F. The second image is formed when the object is placed uh, beyond 2F. When you place the object beyond 2F, you'll have the first ray coming from the tip of that object passing through the optical center and deviated to this other side of the lens. You'll have another ray which is parallel to the principal axis passing through the principal focus. Where the two rays meet is the position of our image. And remember, the exact point where the two rays converge is where the arrow of the image is going to be placed. So don't forget and place the arrow up here. The arrow has to be where the two rays have converged. So for this case, our image is real, it's inverted, it's diminished. If you compare it with the, the object, it looks smaller. So that's why we say it's diminished. It's formed between F and 2F on the other side of the lens. And remember that when you're going to locate the position of F or draw the position of F and 2F, the distance between O and F should be the same distance between F and 2F. This other side, you do the same thing. Distance between F and O should be the same as the distance between F and 2F. Next, we place the object at 2F. If you place the object at 2F, you have the first ray passing and deviated to this other side of the lens. The second ray, which is parallel to the principal axis, passing through the principal focus and converging at this particular point. So our image is real, it's inverted, it's the same size as the object, and it's formed at 2F on the other side of the lens. Finally, for the converging lens or the convex lens, if you place the object between F and O, you're going to have the first ray, which is originating from the tip of the object, passing through the optical center and deviated. Well, the second ray, which is parallel to the principal axis and passing through the principal focus. If you see in this diagram, uh, we were locating the position of the image by having these two rays converge. Look at the above example. The two rays have converged at this particular point. But our rays on this other lower side, they are spreading out. They are diverging outwards, meaning they will never meet. So what do we do in this case? In this case, we are going to produce these lines backwards. So we will start from this point, we produce these lines backwards. And we are supposed to use dotted lines, don't use full lines. Also from the tip of the object, we produce this other line backwards. Whenever they meet, that is the position of our image. And in this case, because the image was formed by imaginary rays, we call that image virtual. So describing our image, we say number one, it's virtual. It is erect or upright. It is magnified and it's formed on the same side as the object. Next, we look at the characteristics of images formed by 
a concave lens or a diverging lens. For a diverging lens, anywhere you're going to place the object, the image will always form between O and F. It's going to be virtual and it's going to be diminished and upright. So the first ray is going to pass through the optical center and while the other ray is going to diverge from the lens but it's going to appear to be originating from this principal focus here. So we produce the line backwards through the principal focus and where the two rays converge, then that's the position of our image. So the image is virtual, upright, and it's diminished. So that's the end of our lesson today. In this lesson, we were able to define a lens, identify types of lenses, define terms used in lenses, and locate images formed by convex and concave lenses. Remember to subscribe to have access to more videos like this in the future. Thank you and bye.